get this would get will change your identity. Look at verse 28. Amen. I said, it will change who you are. Amen. He said, uh, thy name shall be called no more what? Now notice the name of the identity didn't change until he got something out of the struggle. Amen. Now you might think that you know who you are and you might be projecting a certain image and you might be talking about who you are as a believer, as a Christian, but you really will not know your true identity until you go through the struggles. Can I get a witness? How many of y'all have been through things that you fought that you could handle? Your identity was that, you know, I can do anything. I'm, I'm just somewhat almost spiritually invincible. Until you find out that when you start to go through it, you really weren't what you thought you were. Now, I am being deliberate. I'm taking my time because I want y'all to get this. I'll turn the corner after a while. But I'm deliberate in what I'm doing. Because I want you to get these points. And at that point, when you start showing up absorbing these things and getting these things, amen, it doesn't matter who show up or who doesn't show up when you're struggling. Because God's going to take care of you. Ain't that right? So struggles will change who you are. Amen. The Bible says when a man thinks that he stands, let him examine himself. When you think that you have the identity that you feel like that is necessary as to who or who you are and to identify you who you are. When you think that you got that in the bag of chips, watch yourself. Can I get a witness? Amen. 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 And he said unto him, what is thy name? He said, Jacob. He says, thy name should not be called no more Jacob, but Israel. Watch this. For God as a prince has thy power with God. Now, see, when he is in the struggle with you, he gives you power while you're in there. Because you don't come through it by yourself. And it is only when you get through it that you look behind you and see his amazing grace and power. That's why when you go in with your head down, you're feeling sad, and sometimes you're in despair. And when you realize that God is in the struggle, when you start coming out, you don't come out with your head down, you come out with your hands up. Because if you ain't the same person you were when you went into it. Can I get a witness here? Amen. Amen. Somewhere between going in and coming out, your identity changes. Then you come out with your hands up and you just give God. Because you realize that you have power. And the last part of that it says, and has prevailed. Amen. Somebody always say something. Amen. Amen. You've got power and you got the victory. I'm just about finished. The next point I want to bring to you is that struggles will make you fight for the blessing. Help me somebody. Amen. Amen. Look at 26 right quick. I got There's a nugget there. Amen. Watch this. And he says, let me go. So he told Job Jacobs to turn me loose. Amen. The Bible says that the day break, there was wrestling. And it was struggling. It was wrestling. And he said to him, says, let me go for the day is breaking. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And he said, this is what Jacob said, I will not let you go. Except you bless me. That's what, the struggle, that's what the struggle does. See, it'll make you fight, Reverend King, when you know that God has a blessing in the struggle. Amen. Sometimes you might have to wrestle to the breaking of day. And yeah, you might even have to wrestle all night long. But when you know that God is in the struggle, you won't let go. Until God blesses you. How many times, how many times have I felt like I should just give up and walk away in my struggles? And but I realize that if I just hold on, 
Tell him that, amen, I won't let go until you bless me. Can I take you back before I turn the corner? There's a situation that arises here that I'm having a problem with. I'm struggling with it. It says I won't let you go until you bless me. Right? And then we said already read to you that and he prevailed. Now, how is it that can a man wrestle with God and prevail? Maybe some of y'all can help me with that. Amen. He's all powerful, all knowing, almighty. Amen. But Jacob says, I'm not going to turn you loose until you bless me. And we see that and he prevailed against God. And I came to this conclusion. It's not so much that we're dealing with power and might. It's because nobody matches up against God. It's not so much a dealing, a dealing that we're dealing, dealing with strength because nobody is stronger than he. In fact, the Bible says that God's weakness is stronger than man. And man's extremity is God's opportunity. So how is it can he wrestle with God and prevail? I feel like the answer, and this is my theology, you don't have to accept this, you can think about yours. I believe that the answer lies within the struggle itself. Because if he was convinced that if, if Job, uh, Jacob was struggling and wrestling with him, and that he won't go let go until they bless him, then he had no other choice instead of destroying him, he had to just bless him. Because he could have easily wiped him off the map. He could just easily say, look, and he was gone. Amen. But since he saw that he had, he was involved with the struggle, he said, now, instead of me killing him, I just go on and bless him. Somebody help me. Everybody help me. Appreciate it. Amen. Y'all know y'all been there. Amen. Head hard. Amen. And everything else. And, and amen. God could have now annihilated you. He could have just blew us off the map. And all of a sudden, things would have been gone. But instead of, he just simply. Give you the opportunity to prevail against the struggle. He can prevail against him. It's not about how strong you are. It's not about how smart you are. But what about, it's about how you are involved with the struggle. Lastly, I'm getting ready to close. Amen. God is always in the struggle. Let's look at verse 30. Amen. And Jacob called the name of that place Peniel. For I have seen God face to face. Amen. And my life is preserved. That tells me that while he was wrestling and while he was struggling with God, amen, that God was there because he saw his face. Problem was, amen, after seeing God face to face, he thought for sure that his life would be taken away. Because the word had previously declared that no man see God face to face and live. Amen. But he says, now even in your struggle, and watch this, thank the Holy Spirit, he just gave me this. Even in your struggles, your life will be preserved. Somebody didn't get that. I said, even in your struggles, God will preserve your life. Amen. He'll give you life. He'll give you Life. And I believe that he came that you might have life and to have it more abundantly. Amen. So if God is in the struggle, there's a blessing there. Amen. Next point I want to bring to you. Struggles leaves us disjointed. But you will have something when you come through it. Can I say it again? Struggles will leave you disjointed. I told you I deliberately wrote this down because I didn't want to. I didn't want. I didn't want to forget it. But you have something when you come through it. Amen. Let's look at verse thirty-one. Let's teach you a moment. This is a good teaching moment. I promise you, I'm going to turn the corner this way. This way. So the struggles leave us disjointed. It says, and he passed over Penuel. The sun rose upon him, and he halted upon his thigh. Going in 
into the struggle, he had all the joints. But when he come out of the struggle, he was limping because he wouldn't let God go. But now, don't, don't feel bad for Jacob. He was disjointed, he was limping, but guess what? He had the blessing. Oh, I feel like preaching here now. Amen, amen. Limping along life's way, but he still had God's blessing. The reason why he had God's blessing is because God was in the struggle. Tell somebody you might be going through. You might have had all your joints and you might have had all your physical limbs when you went in. But when you come out, amen, you discover that you come out limping. But that's all right. God gave you the blessing and he will continue to bless you. Point to yourself and say, I'm limping. I'm disjointed. But I got the blessing. So he limps on through it. That explains to us. Uh, brother, uh, Sister Mary, and I look at you sometimes, I always talk about her and these others too, but I remember when she was much younger, much younger, vibrant, full of vitality, amen, and just ready to go, and I look at her now, she can't go like she used to, in fact, when she moved now, she had to take a little bit of steps, but guess what, even though she might be somewhat disjointed, she still got the blessing. Y'all might well help me preach here. Amen, amen. Your blessing don't defeat you. It might knock you out of circulation or it might knock you out of, you might knock your joints out. But if you got Jesus, you still got the blessing. Help me somebody. Talk to me, Job, if you will. Although you slay me, you might take everything you got. You might slay me, but guess what? I'm going to stand here and wait. I know the blessing. Not only will it help me, it's going to change who I am. Y'all don't want to help me. Y'all, y'all, y'all don't want to help me. So it says, it says that the blessing left him halted. He was limping upon his leg. And this is the last one, sure enough. Struggles will change your perspective about the struggles. Look at verse 32. This is it. Struggles changes how you think. How you look. How you compose things. Amen. It will change the outlook of things. It will change your perspectives about the struggles. Therefore, the children of Israel ate not of the Sinai. Prior to that, they had no problem with it. They were engaging, indulging themselves. But when they saw that Jacob's thigh was knocked out of joint, it says, therefore the children of Israel ate not of the sand, which shrank, which is upon the hollow of the fowl until this day, because he touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh in the sand that shrank. Now, what did that tell us? Simply tells us that you might not come out of the struggle whole physically. I look at myself. I went through a struggle in 2005. I went in with two kidneys and came out with one. But guess what? I still got the blessing. It also changed my perspective about what I had to go through. Because God can take one and make it two. Serve the same that one can serve the same, the same, the same purpose. It can deliver with the same kind of situation, the same kind of attitude. Amen. It'll help you. It'll help you, and it'll give you a different outlook about your struggles. Can I get a witness? I'm just as healthy as I was before I went in. 
I feel just as good as I did when I first went in. Changed my whole perspective about what the struggle was all about. But guess what? The biggest problem was I had to fight the mental battle. Because the devil done told me that you're going to take everything's gone. You won't be able to do nothing no more. You got a good creature, all that stuff. In the struggle. And since I've come through it, I have changed my so as I get ready to take my seat and turn the corner for y'all, but I know it's what you wait for. But if you ain't got it now, same on you. Now I'm gonna witness it. And I'm gonna leave one scripture with you to consider as I close. Amen. And I don't know why, but I just love this scripture. That is Romans chapter 5 and verse 5. Amen. This verse blesses me. Because it says, and hope maketh not ashamed. Y'all get that? Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. Now you might say, Pastor, what does that have to do with struggle? I'm glad you asked the question. Can I explain it to you? And hope maketh not ashamed. Now, that's the King James translation. Can I give you mine? Can I tell you how I translate it? He tells me that as long as I've got hope in my struggle, Amen. That when I get through my struggles, I won't turn back and be ashamed. Amen. Or be, amen, feeling bad or embarrassed about what I had to go through. Because hope brought me through. Can I get a witness here? Amen. Now, I didn't write this. It says, and hope won't make you ashamed. Amen. I want to care a little bit further. Not only will I not be ashamed while I'm going through my struggles here, but if I hold on to the end, amen, when the Lord himself shall descend from heaven like the voice of an archangel, when God shall come back, because I have hope in him, I won't be ashamed and neither will you. Now you might ask yourself, how did you get there? You didn't get there on your own. The only way you can have this assurance and have this hope is something got to happen to you. Amen. The third person of the Godhead, named the Holy Ghost, has got to be involved. He says, Hope make you be not ashamed because, somebody say, because. Because the love of God is shed abroad. In other words, God's Holy Spirit has poured into you the love of God. Amen, somebody. Amen. Because you have the love of God, and because God is in you have the hope, and you won't be ashamed if you just hold on to God and take it in Can I get a witness here? Somebody help me preach this thing. Anybody got any hope in this place? Anybody got hope? If you got the Holy Ghost, it has been poured into you. And you ought to give God some praise. Because the Holy Ghost has been shed abroad. Not just around you, but in you. It is in your heart. So that's why you ought to give God praise. You might come out limping. You might come out disjointed. But you ought to come out with your hands up. And telling God thank you. Now I got about five folks in the house. Go and put your hands in the air. And tell God thank you. Amen. There's a blessing in the struggle. If you just hold on to his unchanging hand. He will take you through. Somebody help me preach this. Because when I 
bless you. Amen. I said if he's in struggle, he's going to bless you. Don't expect you to remember every point that I made, but you shouldn't have missed them all. If nothing else, get this, your struggles will not defeat you. Amen. I said it won't defeat you. Because you can, not only can, you will come out victorious. How do you know? I'm glad you asked me. Can I tell you? Because greater is the who's in the struggle with you. And the struggle is it. Somebody say yeah.